Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Chris, and today we're gonna to be changing out the rod bearings on my 200,000 mile N54 motor. Now this car comes out of my N54 wagon that we swapped recently, and the donor car was a 335i sedan, which was probably tuned and thrashed on, and the motor has so many miles that I'm just concerned that the rod bearings could be worn. Now this is a pretty affordable service to do, I would say right under $500. So I definitely wanna go through and check how much wear is on these rod bearings, and show you guys how to change them at home because although this isn't a super common problem for the N54, I would say that some people have reported their rod bearings failing and obviously that would cause like a catastrophic failure of the motor and you'd have to buy a new motor. So we're gonna hopefully change mine out preventatively and we'll do a clearance check as well just to make sure that everything's top notch in there. But I hope you guys enjoy the video and be sure to leave a like down below if you do. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to do this job. So in front of me here, we have everything that we're gonna need to do the rod bearing service. And if you haven't yet, you're gonna need to remove your oil pan. So I'll go ahead and put a link to my video on how to do that up in the corner above if you haven't yet. But now we're gonna go ahead and go over all the tools as well as the supplies. Now the number one thing that we need for this job is the rod bearing. And I decided to go with some King Performance engine bearings because they should provide a better performance and reliability solution than the OEM. And they're a fraction of the cost as the BMW bearings. So they come in packs of four, well, technically two cylinders at a time. So we do need to buy three of them, but the total for these three was under a hundred dollars. And then of course we do have our rod bolts. Now these are BMW rod bolts and the instructions tell us to replace them after removing them. So they're one-time use. And so the bolts for these, I think was under a hundred dollars as well. Now you also have to replace the oil pan bolts because those are one-time use, but to get to the rod bolts, we have to first remove the oil pump and these have one-time use bolts as well. So I'll put a part number for all these things down below for you guys to check out. You're also probably gonna to wanna to grab some assembly lube so you can install the bearings safely. You wanna have them lubed up. And then we're also gonna do a plastic gauge test. So I have a little bit right here and I'll put a link to this stuff down below. Now you'll see here, I have two torque angle gauges because these being stretch bolts, they do have an angle that they're torqued to once they're kind of snugged up. So I have the old one here, my old one that I used for the S54 video that I recently made. But after looking through the instructions from BMW, it appears that they have an OEM tool looking similar to this. Now I was able to find this one on Amazon and it was a great deal as well at $30 and should make the torquing sequence a lot easier with this tool because it's gonna cling on to some part of the engine or oil pan and give us an accurate reading of the angle as we torque down the rod bolts. So this will be a really cool tool. I'm excited to test it. And I'll put a link to this down in the description below as well in case you guys need one. So now that you know everything that we need to do this job, let's go ahead and I need to remove the oil pan on my car really quick and then we'll start disassembling the oil pump system. So we've got the oil pan off and we can go ahead and take a look at it now. Now, unfortunately I did already peek my head under here <laughs> to find a common theme. Now we did have a broken bolt on the oil pan before that was causing a leak and I was able to get it out because these are aluminum bolts. So they're very easy to break, but they don't really get you know cross threaded in there when they do break so they can come out easily. Now this oil pump is supposed to have a bolt here. When I look really closely, there is definitely a bolt still in there and it's, broken off unfortunately so that tells me that maybe this oil pump was removed before because I mean that wouldn't have been over torqued from factory so uh, maybe this oil pump was removed I'm hoping that the rod bearings weren't changed because I would honestly love to see them maybe someone just checked the rod bearings but uh I'm hoping maybe they didn't do anything at all hopefully they just uh broke a bolt and stopped there but let's go ahead and check out the oil pan now maybe that bolt is in there Ouch. there's still some oil in the pan here Hmm, I don't see any bolts there. And the oil pan, what's that? I think there's something in there. All right. What the heck? There's definitely something in this oil pan. So it looks like we have 
What are these? Little bits of something. Plastic, maybe timing cover related. Something goes around. Hmm. If you guys recognize this, definitely, definitely comment down below. A couple of smaller fragments down here as well, but just plastic stuff. Don't see like any oil, metal, sorry, we don't see any metal shavings or metal bits. I could probably pass a magnet over these, but I'm pretty sure that these feel plastic. Not only does the oil pump have a broken bolt, but now we also have to consider that there might be like a partially broken timing chain cover. It's definitely a sign that's, that it's aging in there, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. But man, the only way to change that is to take off the entire front, I believe, because we didn't see anything when we did the valve cover on the car before. So there's nothing damaged up here. I can't, you know, we'll take a closer look. I can't really see anything damaged from up here, but maybe when we get the oil pump off, we'll have a better look. We can determine maybe what that piece came from and if stuff is gonna continue to break and, and what kind of problem that could pose. All right, so we've got the oil pump off and I'm lucky enough to have gotten that bolt out. Actually, I have it right here. And uh, this little aluminum bolt, luckily it snapped off and again, it wasn't cross threaded, so we were able to get it out. But I think that what we're gonna do now is remove our first bearing and officially inspect it to determine what the condition is. All right, so we've got our first pair of bearings out and already I'm surprised, happily surprised actually, because it looks like we don't have too much bearing wear and it's a little bit less than I was expecting. You know, we we did just do a set of S54 bearings recently and those ones had some serious spotting, but these ones just have like some, you know, scoring, I wouldn't even say scoring, just normal wear and what's nice is that it's really even too. So nothing that I can like feel with my fingernail if I drag my fingernail across the surface here so that's a really good sign and the crankshaft looks good as well so we're going to go ahead and install the new bearings and we're going to do a clearancing test first so we're going to lubricate the upper bearing which you guys you, you cannot mix up these bearings because they're actually two different pieces and they will not fit into each other's you know into the wrong spaces so you'll be able to tell which one goes into the bottom cap and which one goes into the piston rod but like i said let's go ahead and install our new bearings and since these are one-time use bolts we're going to reuse the old ones to do our clearancing with our plastic gauge and just make sure that the bearings that we have here are the right size for our crankshaft and that we don't have any weird wear or anything like that so we'll use the old rod bolts to test the clearance do the torquing procedure remove the bearing check the plastic gauge and as long as everything's good we can move on to the new bolts and install the rest of the bearings.
So first off, I'd like to say you guys need to get one of these torque angle gauges because it makes it so much easier than the other kind that you know you have to line up. That little clamp right here just makes it so easy and you get, a, I feel like a more accurate angle on your torque sequence. But anyways, the clearance is done at least and looking at it, I think that we are dead on according to the factory measurements. It looks like we have a clearance measurement that should be between 0.02 millimeters and 0.046. And according to my plastic gauge, I think it was around that 0.038 mark. So kind of closer to the upper end of this uh, limit here, but still within the nominal range. So now we can go ahead and reinstall the bearings. This time we're going to lube up the bottom one. We do have to clean up the plastic gauge that's there and on the crank, and then we can go ahead and service the rest of the bearings. So let me go ahead, reinstall this, and then we'll take a look at all these bearings and determine just how much wear you put on an N54 after 200,000 miles. So we've got all the bearings replaced and I'm all oily now, but I think it was worth it. And looking at these things, I'm super surprised to see less wear than I would expect from a BMW engine, but maybe I'm just too used to S54s, S65s, S85s, all those rod bearing prone engines from BMW. But this one, like I said, looks really good for 200,000 miles. A little bit of polishing on some of the uppers, particularly one, two, and six have what I would say is maybe the most, but it, it doesn't even seem that uneven. Seems like just overall really nice wear. And like I said, there's really no heavy grooves in this or on the crankshaft, no damage. So I'm super confident that this uh, engine was at least mildly taken care of, or, you know, let's just say that the N54 rod bearings, they, they must be pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is reinstall the oil pump. I'll give you guys some of the torque specs for that. And then we can go ahead, put the pan, the pickup tube, and we'll go ahead and put the oil pan back together. So that's it, we've got our oil pan installed back on the motor and torqued down to spec, and so that concludes our rod bearing job. Now, like I said before, I am super happy with the condition of these rod bearings. You guys might be able to argue with me, so I'm very curious to hear your opinions down in the comments below. Remember, this engine has 200,000 miles, and after I did some research, it turns out that the oil pump bolts, being that they are aluminum stretch bolts, a couple of them have broken before on customers' cars that have never been serviced before. So that meaning that they could be uh, factory bolts 
tightened down at the factory in Germany that were broken. So I would assume that this car has not had the rod bearing service before, especially since the connecting rod bearings are BMW OEM. And uh, if you were going to replace them and you were going to break the bolts and not replace those, then you'd probably not install BMW expensive bearings. But anyways, I'm happy with the condition, happy with how easy this job was to do. I hope you guys learned something about it as well. And if you did, I would appreciate it if you gave me a like or a comment down below. And if you enjoy this sort of content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Now we do have a part two to this video coming up soon because we have to service the turbos and I have a couple of cool tutorials and tricks to show you guys there. So stay tuned for that video. But for now, I hope everyone has an amazing day and we will see you next time.